Chapter 26 Introduction to Rasa Tattva Vijay Kumar was absent for about a month. During this time, Brajanath's grandmother, who understood the dispositions of both Brajanath and Vijay Kumar, arranged for a suitable bride through a Brahmana mediator. When Vijay Kumar was informed, he sent his younger brother to Bilva Pushkarini to organize the wedding ceremony, which was duly performed at an astrologically auspicious time on an auspicious day. Vijay Kumar arrived some time later, when all the marriage proceedings had been completed. He sat without much interest in the situation around him. He did not discuss worldly affairs such as health and prosperity, for his heart was deeply absorbed in spiritual matters. Brajanath detected his indifference and said, Uncle, your heart appears to be uncertain these days. Why is that? It is simply by your order that I am being bound in the shackles of worldly life. What have you decided to do yourself? Vijay Kumar said, I have decided to finally go to Sridham Puri to have the darshan of Sri Purushottam Sri Jagannath Dev. Some pilgrims are setting out for Puri in a few days, and I will also go with them. I shall go and take permission from Sri Gurudev. After taking lunch that afternoon, Brajanath and Vijay Kumar went to Mayapur, where they offered Dandavat Pranam at Sri Raghunath Das Babaji's feet, and begged his permission to make a pilgrimage to Puri. Babaji Mahashai was delighted to hear their plea. His heart melted with affection, and he said, It is very good that you are going to Puri to take darshan of Sri Jagannath Dev. Sriman Mahaprabhu's sitting place is in Kashi Mishra's house in Puri, and Sri Gopal Guru Goswami, the disciple of Sri Rakrishvara Pandit, is present there now in all his glory. Be sure to have his darshan, and accept his instructions with devotion. Nowadays, it is only in that Mahatma's throat that the splendor of Sri Swarup Goswami's teaching is fully manifest. Having received Sri Gurudev's permission, Brajanath and Vijay Kumar joyfully returned home. On the way, at Brajanath's eager request, Vijay Kumar agreed to also take him to Puri. When they arrived home, they disclosed their plans for the pilgrimage to everyone. Brajanath's grandmother was also ready to go with them, so finally it was decided that all three would go to Puri together. The famous Rathayatra of Sri Jagannath, Sri Baladev and Sri Subhadra Devi is held in Puri in the month of Asara, June-July. At that time, those who are dedicated to Dharma flood in from all corners of India and descend on Puri en masse. For this reason, pilgrims from distant places set out from their homes many days beforehand in order to arrive in good time. The month of Jayeshta, May and June, had scarcely begun when these three also set out for Puri, along with the other pilgrims. After walking for some days, they passed Dantana and arrived at Jalashwa. Gradually moving on, they took Darshan of Kirchor Gopinath and came to Sri Viraja Ketra, where they performed Nabi Gaya Kriya and took bath in the Vaitarani. Later, they had darshan of Sri Shakshi Gopal in Katak and Sri Lingaraj in Ekamra Kanan and finally arrived in Sri Chetra, Puri Dham. All the pilgrims were accommodated in various places as directed by their respective pandas, guardian priests. Vijay Kumar, Brajanath and Brajanath's grandmother found lodgings at Harichandi Sahi. In accordance with the regulative principles, they took bath in the sea and then went for darshan of Sri Jagannath. They began to take darshan, performing parikram and honor the prasad of the various tirthas of that dharm. After three or four days, Vijay Kumar and Brajanath had darshan of the Sri Vigraha of Sriman Mahaprabhu, as well as his footprints, and also his fingerprints impressed on the Garuda Stamba, 
the column of the Garuda, in the temple of Sri Jagannath Dev. When Sriman Mahabrabhu took darshan of Sri Jagannath Dev, he would become overwhelmed with prem, and streams of tears would flow from his eyes. At such times the stones beneath his feet melted from his touch and were marked with his footprints. At the same time his prem also melted the Garuda Stamba, which he used to support himself, and the marks of his fingers were imprinted there. When Vijay Kumar and Brajanath saw these impressions, they became overwhelmed with prem. That same day they went to Kashi Mishra Bhavan. In that great house constructed from stone is Sri Gambira, the small room in which Sriman Mahaprabhu would reside in his state of prem. There, in order to console him when he was immersed in feelings of separation from Krishna, his dear associates, Sri Swarup Damodar and Rai Ramananda, would recite shlokas and sing bhajans about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Vijay Kumar and Brajanath took darshan of that place and of Sriman Mahaprabhu's paraphernalia, such as his wooden sandals, that are gloriously present there. On one side, Within is the mandir of Sri Radhakant, and on the other side was the seat of Sri Gopal Guru Goswami. Vijay and Brajanath fell at Sri Gopal Guru Goswami's feet. They were carried away in the happiness of Prem and began to shed tears. Sri Guru Goswami was very pleased to see their ecstatic sentiments and embraced them. He made them sit down close to him and immediately asked, I wish to know who you are. When Bijai and Brajanath introduced themselves, Guru Goswami's eyes began to stream with tears of love. Hearing the name of Sri Navadweep, he said, Today I have become blessed by seeing the residence of Sridam Navadweep. Tell me, how are the Vaishnavas in Mayapur, such as Sri Raghunath Das and Gorachand Das, are they well? Aho, when I remember Raghunath Das, the memories of my Shiksha Guru, Sri Das Goswami, come to my mind. Guru Goswami called his disciple, Sri Dayana Chandra, and said, These two Mahatmas will take prasad here today. Sri Dayana Chandra took them both to his room and offered them Sri Mahaprasad. Afterwards, the three of them discussed many subjects. Dhyana Chandra Goswami was overjoyed when he saw Vijay Kumar's vast erudition in Srimad Bhagavatam and recognized Brajanath as a fine scholar of all the Shastras. He related all their discussions to Sri Guru Goswami, who was also delighted to hear of their expertise in Shastra. Sri Gopal Guru Goswami called them near to him and said, You are both very dear to me. Kindly allow me to see you every day as long as you stay in Sri Purushottam Dham. Vijay Kumar humbly replied, O Prabhu, Sri Raghunath Das Babaji of Sri Mayapur has bestowed great mercy upon us. He has given us so much shiksha, and he ordered us to accept instructions at your divine feet. Guru Goswami said, Raghunath Das Babaji is a highly learned scholar, and you should follow his instructions thoroughly. If you want to know anything further, you may come here tomorrow afternoon and present your inquiries. You may honor Mahaprasad here tomorrow. They conversed for some time, and then Vijay and Brajanath took permission from Sri Guru Goswami and returned to Harachandra Sahi. The next day, Vijay Kumar and Brajanath returned to Sri Radhakant Mat at the appointed time. They honored Prasad and then approached Sri Gopal Guru Goswami. When they had offered their respectful pranam to him, they said, Prabhu, we want to know about Rasa Tattva. Our lives will become successful when we hear about Krishna Bhakti Ras from your lotus mouth. You are the preeminent holy master of the Nimada Sampradaya, and you are reigning as Jagat Guru on the seat of Sriman Mahaprabhu's successor, Sri Swarup Goswami. We desire to hear Rasa Tattva from your divine lips, so that our scholarship may become fruitful. Sri Gopal Guru Goswami 
was overjoyed, and taking these worthy disciples to a solitary place, he spoke to them. Sachinandana Nimai Pandit appeared in Sri Navadweep Mayapur, and he is the very life breath of the bhaktas of Sri Goramandal, Sri Chetramandal, and Sri Brajmandal. May that Sachinandan give us joy. May Swarup Goswami, whose Madhurya Ras Seva always fills Sri Mahaprabhu with elation, be manifest in the core of our hearts. Sri Vakrashra Pandit thoroughly captivated Nimai Pandit with his dancing. He also showered his mercy on Devananda Pandit by purifying him and making him Krishna's Bhakta. May that Sri Vakrashra Pandit confer all auspiciousness upon you. Rasa is an unequalled tattva, which can be compared to the rising of the moon, whose radiance is the expanding leela of Parabrahm Shri Krishna. Bhakti Ras is the function of Krishna Bhakti when it becomes absolutely pure. Brajanath Is Rasa a principle that is predetermined? Goswami I cannot answer that question in a single word, yes or no. I will explain the subject elaborately so that you can understand it clearly. The Krishna Rati about which you have heard from your Gurudev is called Staibhav. When the other components, Samagri, of Rasa are combined with the Staibhav, the resultant manifestation is called Krishna Bhakti Ras. Brajanath Will you kindly explain in detail what is Staibhav? And what are the constituent ingredients, samagri, of ras? We have heard from our Gurudev about bhav, but we have not heard how bhavs combine with each other to form rasa. Goswami Ordinarily, at the stage of bhav, bhakti is Krishna rati. This rati arises in the heart of the bhakta from the sanskars of past and present lives and develops further to the stage of rasa, when it becomes the very embodiment of anand. It is made up of four different ingredients. 1. Vaibhav 2. Anubhav 3. Sattvika and 4. Vyabhachari or Sanchari. I will first explain these ingredients. Vaibhav is the cause of tasting rati. It has two divisions, alamban, the support, and Udipan, the awakening stimulus. Alamban also has two divisions, namely the object, Vishaya, and the abode, Ashraya. The Ashraya of Rati is the person in whom Rati exists, while the Vishaya of Rati is the person towards whom Rati is directed. Krishna's Bhaktas are the Ashraya of Rati because they have Rati in their hearts, whereas Krishna is the Vishaya of Rati, because Rati is directed towards him. Brajanath So far we have understood that Vaibhav is divided into two parts, Alamban and Udipan, and that Alamban is also divided into two categories, namely Ashraya and Vishaya. Krishna is Vishaya and the Bhaktas are Ashraya. Now we are inquisitive to know whether Krishna is sometimes the Ashraya of Bhakti. Goswami. Yes, he is. When bhaktas have rati towards Krishna, Krishna is vishaya and the bhaktas are ashraya. And when Krishna has rati towards the bhaktas, then Krishna is ashraya and the bhaktas are vishaya. Rajanath. We have heard from our Gurudev about Sri Krishna's 64 qualities. If there is anything further to be described in regard to Sri Krishna, please tell us. Goswami. Although all the qualities exist fully in Sri Krishna, his manifestation is complete in Dwarka, more complete in Mathura, and most complete in Gokul. This is because of the degree to which the qualities are manifested in the respective dharms. Krishna is one, but he plays the parts of four types of heroes, Nayak, according to the differences in his Leela. They are Dhirodita, Dhir Lalit, Dhir Shanta, and Dhir Data. Brajanath, what type of Nayak, hero, is Dhirodita? 
Goswami. The symptoms of Krishna as Dhirodhita Nayak are gravity, courtesy, forgiveness, compassion, modesty and concealed pride. Brajanath. What kind of Nayak is called Dira Lalit? Goswami. Krishna falls under the control of his beloved gopis because he is expert in relishing loving mellows, rasik. He is on the threshold of youth, navayovana. He is ingenious in joking, parihas chaturi. He is free from anxiety, nischintata. That is why he is called Dira Lalit Nayak, Brajanath. And what are the symptoms of Dira Shanta, Goswami? Krishna is known as Dira Shanta Nayak when he is decorated with the qualities of being naturally sedate, forbearing, judicious and humble. Brajanath. What is Dhiradatta? Goswami. Sometimes in his Leela, Krishna is also seen to be jealous, egotistical, deceitful, angry, fickle and boastful. At that time, he is known as Dhiradatta Nayak. Brajanath. The qualities that you have described are mutually contradictory. So how can they possibly exist at the same time in one Krishna? Goswami. Krishna is by nature fully independent, autocratic and supreme, and he has boundless opulence. It is by the action of Krishna's achintya shakti, inconceivable potency, that these contradictory qualities exist in him at the same time. For example, we read in the Kurma Purana, Ashtulas chanus chaiva, stulo nus chaiva sarvata, avarna sarvata prokta, shyamo raktana lo chanai, aishvarya yogur bhagavan, virudari to bibyate, tatapi dosho parame, naivaraya katanchana. Guna viruda apyete samaharya samantaha. Translation All contradictory qualities are splendidly and very beautifully manifest in Bhagavan at the same time. Although he is intangible and minute in every way, he is tangible and all pervading in every way. He is devoid of mundane color, but he has a transcendental shyam hue and the corners of his eyes are reddish. This is how he has been described in the Shastras. Bhagavan is said to possess contradictory virtues on account of his mystic opulence. Nevertheless, no fault can be attributed to Parameshwara. Although the aggregate of his qualities seems to be contradictory, these qualities are certainly virtues in all respects. In the Mahavara Purana it is stated, Sarve nitya shashvatascha dehas tasya paratmanaha hano padana rahita naiva prakriti jakvachit paramananda sandoha gyan matrascha sarvataha sarve sarva guna puna sarva dosha vivrajita All the bodies of that paramatma are nitya and free from the two types of activities known as giving up and accepting. His bodies are not born from material nature, but are composed of consciousness and are the embodiment of Paramananda. Each and every limb of his body is filled with all transcendental qualities and is free from all defects. End of translation. The Vaishnava Tantra states, Astadasha Mahadoshai Rahita Bhagavat Luna Saravai Vashyar Mahi Satya Vignananda Rupini Bhagavan is endowed with all kinds of superhuman power, perfect knowledge and joy, and his body is free from the eighteen types of general faults. End of translation. These eighteen general faults are Mohas Tandra Brahmo Ruksha Rasata Kama Ulbana Lolata Madamatsaryan Himsakeda Parisramo 
asatyam krodha akshana, ashanka vishva vibrama, vishamatva parapeksha, dosha asta dashodita. From the Vishnu Yamo. 1. Illusion. 2. Lethargy. 3. Bewilderment. 4. Dullness. 5. Intense lust. 6. Fickleness. 7. Pride. 8. Envy. 9. Violence. 10. Remorse. 11. Desire for excessive peace and comfort. 12. Untruthfulness. 13. Anger. 14. Hankering. 15. Fear. 16. Hallucination. 17. Contradiction. And 18. The tendency to depend on others. End of translation. All these transcendental qualities are present in the forms of the avatars, and they are expressed to the utmost extent in Sri Krishna, who is avatari, the origin of all avatars. In addition to these, Krishna possesses a further eight qualities, which indicate his manliness, purushatva. These are 1. Shobha, beauty. 2. Vilas, fascinating transcendental pastimes. 3. Madhurya, sweetness. 4. Mangalya, auspiciousness. 5. Stirata, stability. 6. Teja, brilliance. 7. Lalit, playfulness. And 8. Odarya, munificence. His beauty is particularly noticeable in kindness towards the lowly, rivalry towards his peers, valour, enthusiasm, dexterity, and the revelation of truth. Vilas is characterised in him by his profound manner, calm glance, and humorous words. His madhurya, sweetness, is noticeable for his pleasing loveliness is manifest in all his activities. His auspiciousness is the abode of faith of the entire world. His stability means that he is not deviated in any activity. His brilliance means attracting the attention of everyone towards himself. He exhibits an abundance of amorous sentiments and endeavors and is thus called Lalit, playful. His mood of completely offering himself is called Odarya. Sri Krishna is the crest jewel of all heroes, and in his human-like pastimes, sages such as Garga have been described as his assistants in matter of Dharma. Kachriyas such as Yuyudana in matters of war, and ministers such as Uddhava in matters of counselling. Brajanath, I have fully understood how Krishna is the heroic personification of Mellows. Now please tell us about Krishna's bhaktas who are fit to experience rasa and who are included in the category of vaibhav, Goswami. Only those whose hearts are overwhelmed by loving sentiments for Krishna can be bhaktas in rasa tattva. All of the 29 qualities, from truthfulness to bashfulness, being embarrassed by true statements, which have been described in relation to Krishna, are also found in his bhaktas. Brajanath, how many types of Krishna's bhaktas are fit to experience rasa? Goswami, there are two types, the sadhak and the siddha. Brajanath, who is a sadhak? Goswami, sadhaks are those in whom ruchi for the topics of Krishna has arisen and who have acquired the qualification to have direct darshan of Krishna but who have not yet completely surpassed all obstacles and difficulties. Madhyama bhaktas, adorned with the symptoms described in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.46, Ishwari Tat Abhineshu, are in the category of sadhak. Rajanath, Prabhu, are the bhaktas described in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.47, Acharyam Eva Hariya, not eligible to experience ras? Goswami, they are not sadhaks until they become shuddha-bhaktas by the mercy of other shuddha-bhaktas. Only personalities 
like Bilva Mangala, are genuine sadhaks. Brajanath, who are the Siddha Bhaktas? Goswami, Siddha Bhaktas are those who do not experience any suffering, whose activities are all performed under the shelter of Sri Krishna, and who always taste the happiness of Prem. There are two types of Siddha Bhaktas, those who have gained perfection, some Prapta Siddha, and those who are eternally perfect, Nitya Siddha. Brajanath, who are the Bhaktas who have gained perfection, some Prapta Siddha? Goswami, they are also of two types, those who attained perfection through Sadhana, Sadhana Siddha, and those who achieved perfection by mercy, Kripa Siddha. Brajanath, who are the Nitya Siddhas? Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami has said, Atmakoti gunan krishne premanam paramam gata nityananda guna sarve nitya siddha mukandavat. Translation The nitya siddhas are those who, like Mukunda, are the embodiment of Ananda and whose qualities are eternal. Their main symptom is that they are endowed with a prem for Krishna that is ten million times more than they have even for themselves. End of translation. It is said in the Uttara Khand of the Padma Purana, Yata so mitra bharato, yata sankha sanadaya, tata te naiva jayante, nijaloka dhyatatraya, punas taiva gachanti, Tatpadam shashvatam param, na karma bandanam janma, vaishnavanam chavidyate. Translation Vaishnavas are not bound by karma, nor do they take birth like mundane human beings. Rather, they appear as Lakshman and Bharat, the sons of Sumitra, appeared with Sri Ramchandra, as Balaram and others appear in this material world with Bhagavan Sri Krishna by his will, and then return again to the eternal transcendental abode along with him, or as the members of the Yadu dynasty who also appear in Bhagavan's manifest pastimes, and then return with him to the supreme abode, Paramdham, when his pastimes become unmanifest. End of translation. Brajanath. Prabhu, I have understood the Alamban aspect of Vaibhav. Now kindly explain what is referred to as Udipan. Goswami. Udipan is that which causes Bhav to be excited or stimulated. Krishna's qualities, his activities, laughter and the fragrance of his bodily limbs, his flute, bugle horn, ankle bells, conch shell and footprints, the places of his pastimes, Tulsi, his bhaktas, the auspicious times, such as Ekadasi, Harivasha, and so on, these are all Udipan. Krishna's qualities, guna, are of three types, related to his body, mind, and speech, respectively, kaika, manasika, and vachika. Age, vyasa, is prominent among the qualities relating to his body, there are three divisions of Krishna's age, Komara, Poganda, and Kishora. Komaram pancham dantam, Pogandam dashamavadi, Asodashak chakishoram, Yovanam syattataparam. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 2 1 306. Translation The Komara period lasts until the age of five. The Poganda period lasts from this point until the age of ten, and the Kishora stage begins at the age of ten and continues until the age of sixteen. The age after that is known as Yovana. End of translation. The Kishora stage also has three divisions, which are called the beginning, middle, and end, Adya, Madhya, and Shesha. Among the bodily qualities, the consideration of beauty is predominant. Beauty is present when the bodily limbs are in proper proportion to each other. Clothing, decoration, and the arrangement of articles, including the hair and so on, 
is called prasadana. Krishna has three kinds of flute, vamsi, venu, and murli. The venu is twelve fingers long and as thick as a thumb, and it has six holes. The murli is two hands in length and has four finger holes, besides the hole in the mouthpiece. The vamsi is seventeen fingers long. Of this, there is a clear space of three finger widths at the tail end. At the head end of the flute is another space of four finger widths, which is also clear, except for the hole for blowing, which is half a finger's width from the end. In the middle is a space containing eight finger holes, separated from each other by a gap of half a finger's width. The vamsi, therefore, has a total of nine holes. The conch shell that turns to the right and rests radiantly in Krishna's hand is called Panchajanya. Through these Udipans, the rati of the bhaktas awakens, and when it is directed towards Krishna, the object of rati, it becomes the very embodiment of Anand. Rati is Staibhav, and it alone transforms into rasa. Come here tomorrow at the same time, and I will tell you about rasa, and I will also explain Anubhav and so on. Vijay Kumar and Brajanath offered Dandavat to Srila Gopal Guru Goswami's lotus feet and took their leave. Absorbed in contemplation on the subject of rasa, they went to have darshan of Siddha Bakul. From there they went to take darshan of Sri Jagannath Dev and then returned to their quarters. Thus ends the 26th chapter of Jaiva Dharma entitled Introduction to Rasa Tattva. <laughs> 